Whoa, good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends. I'm your host, Fred Schultz, and um, I got to tell you, I don't even know where to begin tonight. You know, first of all, I, I got a, the bunch of guys I got in tonight are just cool as hell. Um, you know, I, I obviously got Mr. William Bailey on, and I've got Connor Bryant from way down under in Australia. He's going to, um, you know, he's going to let us know what's going on down there in the paintball world. And plus, you know, Connor, you know, you, you never know where it's going to go with Connor. It's really cool as hell. I, I love it. You know, he just uh, whew, takes off and we just kind of follow him sometimes. Then I've got a first time and a very special guest on tonight, Mr. William Crook, Mad Frog. And uh, it's so funny. I did a show night before last with uh, David Justin, um, Hanging with the Reaper. If you get a chance, watch his show, Okay. David's a cool guy. Um, I, I don't care what his wife says. I like him. He's a good guy. So, but anyhow, uh, I was on there and there was a guy on there named Happy. And he's holding up, he's got his container, his beer in this container. And it's a mad frog container. And I'm like, oh my God, just out of nowhere. So I'm absolutely loving it. It is just cool as hell. Hey, Stephen Sarasota, Sarasota. You know, I'm, I'm the name butcher. So everybody remember that. Okay. But hey. Good evening to you, buddy. I appreciate it. And Kenny Stewart, Kenny Stewart General uh, Paintball Museum. Kenny just moved up to uh, Michigan, and uh, actually, that's where uh, Mad Frog is from. And uh, that should be pretty cool. Uh, maybe we can hook these guys up later on, because you know, Kenny, Kenny's a great guy. He's got just uh, a ton of stuff. So anyhow, let me get to this because I want to get to my guests. But you know, I'm like, God, my head's like spinning here right now, guys. You know, I mean, I got so much crap going on. Um, I want to start right here, real quick. I got this today from Germany. This is from the old Iron Division. Have made me an honorary member. So I want to thank Roman and all the guys in the old Iron Division over there in Germany so much for. Uh, you know, affording me that. I think that's cool as hell. And plus, he sent me a bunch of candy, too, which was really cool. Except my wife ripped off the candy. But I still got the paper, so it, I guess it's a fair trade. I don't think so, but I'll say that because I love the lady. Uh, anyhow, so, you know, tonight, uh, you can see it on the crawl right there. Uh, Mr. William Bailey, Mr. Connor Bryant, and Mr. William Crook, as I said before, these guys are going to give you guys one hell of a show. This is really a good group of people. Um, you know, Mad Frog, we're going to talk about. He has his company, Mad Frog, and uh, he's a hell of a paintball player. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit, too, about, you know, we were lucky enough last weekend. We went down and uh, to Bud Orr's. So we were at Bud Orr's with Mr. Greg Hastings, which is watching the show right now. Hey, Joshua Silverman, how are you, buddy? Good, good job. Love you being on, man. And we're going to have Josh back on here, too. Uh, Josh is a show by himself, but we'll get that's another show. So we'll get into that. But anyhow, Greg Hastings, um, you know, he does the paintball videos and video games, excuse me. And uh, it's just terrific to, what the guy does. And he was down there and Mad Frog was down there and Sonny Lopez and Bud Orr. And it was just a great time. You know, I got to meet these guys and, uh, you know, uh, Mad Frog and I'll get into that just a little bit more uh, when I bring these guys up. But uh, hell of a time. And like I say, if you're looking for a great video game, get a hold of Greg Hastings. You know, we're going to Greg's going to come on the show as soon as we can drag him off his boat. Um, but uh, he's going to be on the show. He's a, a pretty good guy. And uh, I want to tell you a couple of shows that we've got coming up here. I want to tell you real quick before I get into my shout outs. Next weekend, I am doing the women in paintball. Okay. This ought to be interesting. Um, it's going to be, I have Mrs. Tracy Perez, very well known. I also have Mrs. Tammy Ambers Anderson. Uh, I'm blown it. I wrote it down bad. Anyhow, that's Todd Anderson's, uh, Amberson's, uh, wife uh i'll get it right and i got bia young be a young paxson mike paxson's wife and then i'm bringing in a new one now this is gonna i hope this works out for me her name is carla gurardo now carla you're gonna probably tell me next week when i have you on that i butchered your name um sorry about that but uh 
anyhow, the three of the, the first three that I mentioned are very, very well known in paintball and do a lot for paintball. They're terrific, terrific ladies. And the last one, Carla, we are going to make her very popular. We're going we're gonna to make her right up in there. Everybody's going to know you after that, Carla, I tell you. And then after that, the week after that, we have got back by popular demand on the 23rd, which is two Tuesdays from tonight, the Boonie Boys from Canada. I had the Boonie Boys on before. Love them guys. And so did the audience. The audience, they, after the show, I was just getting swamped with people saying, hey, bring these guys back. So we're going to bring them back. Jeff Thompson and, and all the Boonie Boys that were on last time. They were absolutely great. I just, uh, I loved it. Now, uh, one thing I want to mention real quick, too. Um, you know, it's always sad when when paintball loses somebody that's that's been around for quite a while and somebody that's made such an impact on the people around them in the sport of paintball. And um, a while back, uh, Mr. Paul Hernandez passed away. Now, Paul was from Southern California, so I've never got a chance to meet Paul um, that I know of anyhow, um, but they are having a benefit for him this weekend. And it's going to be at Glen Forrester's uh, Ambush Park. That's the name of the field. So if you guys get a chance, um, you know, jump out to Ambush Park this weekend and support this. Uh, they're uh, they're going to have a big feed. They're going to have a, a, a lot of people, I understand, are showing up out there. You know, um, just just if you get a chance, go out there. Because what we need to do is, you know, help support them. Because, you know, Dennis Tipman, a real good friend of mine, passed away a few months ago. And, you know, as, the, as these guys pass away, you know, so goes the old memory of paintball. And um, if you get a chance, get out there, please, and, and support that. Um, Mr. Paul Hernandez and his family, our condolences to all of you. Absolutely. Now, quick, i got to give my shout outs here. I always start with Mr. Tim Schloss. Uh, Timmy O'Stone, Tiger Stripe Camouflage. You can see my jacket back there behind me. Um, great, great person. Now he owns uh, Gateway Paintball in St. Louis, uh, 10 minutes from the airport, as Tim would say. So if you get a chance out there, you know, the weather's starting to get better, um, you know, get out there and let's play some ball there, man. I, Tim's been working on this field and I understand it is just cool as hell. Brought in a couple Lear jets, and I, he's just got a bunch of stuff. You know, Tim's one of them guys that's, you know, he, he's never satisfied. He's always got to make it better. Always got to make it better. And, and he definitely is doing that, no doubt. Hey, Tracy Perez, how you doing, sweetheart? Tracy is going to be on next week. I'm here. Oh, you're going to be a show. You know, it's going to be sad, though. You know, Bill and I are going to be sitting there, and we're going to be like two thorns in a bouquet of roses, which kind of sucks, you know, but I guess we're just going to have to live with it. Um, but anyhow, and then I got to also say hello to Mr. Dan John Colby, Immortal Air. <laughs> Used to be Air America, as you can see my jacket behind me also. Um, these guys are great. Um, what they've done over the years for paintball and their air system is phenomenal. And they've got the new reg coming out. Um, Dan Dan says, hey, hey, it's coming out, but don't talk too much about it. So I, I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it is coming out. So get ready for it. And then I got to say hi to a, a very good friend of mine and Actually, uh, he invited us to his home last week, and Mr. Bud Orr from War Game Products. Um, you know, I, you don't have to really say a bunch about Bud Orr. All you got to do is say his name, because everybody knows Bud, and everybody loves Bud. He's just, uh, he's been a friend of mine for over 30 years, and uh, he's still a terrific, terrific friend of mine. And I, I just feel blessed with the people that, you know, that I have got to know in the past. And I feel blessed with the people I'm meeting now since I got back into this. So it's, um, it's pretty cool. Um, and then I have to say hi to Mr. Tom K. Air Gun Designs. Um, Tom and I also go back. We used to travel together all the time. Uh, great guy, great person. We've had Tom on the show. We're going to bring Tom back on the show again. That should be pretty cool. And then I mentioned uh, Rainey and Juby Boucher. They had paintball news back in the day. They'd put out that newspaper two times a month, would not charge the people anything. They, they used all the money that they got for advertising to pay for this, and it would go to all the fields across the U.S. You could sit and, and look in there. You could find out what just happened, what's coming up, what fields where. I, it, it was just, uh, I mean, you'd pick it up. You just learned 
everything. It was just so cool. It was unreal. I, I, I love them people. They did an awful, awful lot for the, for the sport of paintball. And then Randy Camilla used to be the editor for APG. I always mention Randy because Randy's a terrific, terrific guy. Um, Randy was on my show uh, that I did down at Disney for ESPN. Randy gave me my first cover shot on ESPN. Um, one of many, actually. I, I can never say enough about him. And then I had Jerry Braun, Paintball Sports. Uh, Jerry is a terrific, terrific person. Um, you know, I got to travel with Jerry. Jerry's a kick in the butt. He's an attorney. But guy, I got to tell you, guys, he's a funny son of a gun. I used to joke around with him and had such a good time with him. It was it was just unreal. And he's still around. He has still has his field, which is like, uh, I don't know, 100 years old. Uh, back there in New York, uh, Mr. Kevin Donaldson from the Master Blasters. Kevin's kind of his gatekeeper. So that's where they're going to have the World Cup here in a couple of months. Uh, you get on my site, you'll be able to check it out, check out the dates and everything like that. And you're going to want to go. If you can get to that World Cup, you, you're going to want to go there. I, I was like at the first World Cup there, and it was absolutely great. It absolutely was. And we just had Mr. Thomas Yee chime in. Thomas goes way back. Thomas is one of the real, real good guys in the sport. And uh, I, I actually, uh, Bill Bailey got to go and have lunch with him, I guess, a few months ago or a few weeks ago. I can't even remember now, but I know that they went and had lunch, him and Tim Schloss. And uh, I bet that was a heck of a time. I would have loved to have been there. And Brad Traverse. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You have a good one, buddy. I appreciate very much you watching us. I really, really do. And then I got to mention um, Mr. Ross Alexander. I got to talk to Ross today, a line SI, Bushmaster, um, great person. We're going to be dragging uh, Ross here and out of retirement. And we're going to put him on a show here coming up pretty soon. Ross is a great guy. Ross was uh, my first marker manufacturer that uh, actually – was my sponsor. And so, you know, I can't ever say enough about him. And I am going to, we're going to drag him out on the show. We're going to put him on with a couple other guys and wait to hear the stories this guy's got. I mean, the guy's amazing. And, and he's so big, you know, he's like six, five. And I sent him some of our pictures, you know, it, that's why I never stood next to him because, you know, I always look, I'm six one and I look like I'm standing in a hole next to this guy. But uh, he's, a, he's a great guy. I got to talk to him today after a long, long time. And uh, I am so glad that we've connected back together. I absolutely love it. And then I got to say hi to Jim Lively. Jim Lively used to have Lively Productions. He did the Masters uh, back in the day in Tennessee. And I got to tell you, if you played professional paintball back in the day and you had to go to the Masters, the Masters was the bomb. The Masters and Jerry's World Cup. Those were the two I just would never, ever miss. I had to always take constant pursuit to those two. They were the best tournaments ever. You know, and, and when you go to these two, it was like a, a family reunion because you were seeing people that you could never see normally because you all live in different parts of the country and actually different parts of the world. So, you know, it was so cool when you go there and, and you'd see all these people. And the events were fantastic. They were rough great. They were put on great. And the facilities were great. Everything was just terrific about him. And then I got to say hello to Mr. Gino from Belkin. Um, I, I mention Gino every week because, you know, Gino is a good guy. Gino's kind of a behind the scenes kind of guy. You know, he's got a, a, just one hell of an operation when it comes to Belkin, the store. It's, he's got great people like Josh Silverman and, and uh, David Bell uh, and all these guys working for him. Real quick, David Bell, he's the one that made View Loader. We're going to have David Bell here on the show here uh, pretty soon. Um, I will let you guys know when, but that should be pretty cool too. But getting back to Gino, just real quick before I bring my guests on. Gino does a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys never seen. He, the way he supports a, a lot of people and charities and just just everything and never, never says anything about it. Um, I just know because, you know, I, I, I just known Gino for a long time. So him and I talk and he's the one that, that got me started on the Tracy Perez thing, you know, and, and Tracy, I, I would have never got to meet Tracy Perez if it wasn't for Gino. And I, I met her. I love the lady. She's just nothing short of terrific. And we got to do a great fundraiser for her. And I couldn't think of doing it for a better person, but who got me going on it? 
Gino from Velkin. And now the weather's getting good, man. You want to get on his site, get on Gino's site and check his stuff out, man. It's uh, He's got some cool, cool stuff on there. Yeah, I absolutely love it. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to a little guy that's an up-and-coming player. It's Mr. Mark Gong Jr. I, I give him a shout out every week because he's seven years old going on eight years old. He practices with the OG Ironman. And he's just a hell of a player. He, he really is. And, and tonight I want to add, you know, not just Tracy Perez, but Brian Benini from Push Goggles. That's what I wear now is Push Goggles. And I absolutely love them. This goggle system is the bomb. I just, uh, I think it's great as hell. And Kathy Alvarez just jumped in and say hi. And I want to mention her son, Adrian, who plays for the Sharks, who is out they're kicking butt. And the reason this kid is doing so good is because he's got a mom that takes him to practice, takes him to the tournaments, works with them. I mean, that's what Bill's paintball. It really does. You know, like Dirk Gadbury and his son, Michael Baird, uh, Dave Cook, you know, all of these guys from the OG Ironman now, they all, their sons all play and, you know, they're all growing up now. And, it's just incredible to see from when I started, all these guys played on Constant Pursuit, now the OG Ironman, and, and they're just great people. And what they did is they've raised their kids to love paintball, respect paintball, and that's what it takes for our sport to keep going. You know, bring people together, make it happen, guys. Okay, so, you know, I'm, wow, I'm almost out of wind here. That's almost. I still got probably another 45 minutes in me yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start bringing some of these people out here real quick. I'm going to bring out, first of all, my co-conspirator here, Mr. William Bailey. Hello. How you doing, Bill? Uh, still recovering from this weekend. <laughs> yeah, you went out to uh, the cave game, huh? Yeah, yeah. We went up to the Bob White's game that they've got up at uh, Jaggers in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And it's a, they play inside a quarry and then they've got a uh, several fields above the quarry also that, so you can play outside. And, uh, wow. How cool uh, is that? Huh? Yeah. It's really cool. <laughs> was it, was it warm or cool? Yeah, it was warm. It was, how probably, was it? Probably sixties, sunny out. It was great. Oh, really? They were probably running three, four fields at a time, you know, up, you know, up out of the cave and then, uh, <laughs> You know, several, they, they had mechanic and pump guns on one side and then uh, batteries on the other, you know, down in the quarry. Right. So, uh, you know, plenty of air, uh, awesome paint. Uh, you got to actually use some Defy paint and, uh, and, and it was, it was awesome. You know, I got to see that when I was in California and I finally got to actually shoot some of it here. And um, I, I was happy with the whole weekend. It was great. Oh, terrific, man. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Bill, we got uh, a couple of good guests on here tonight. You know what? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. We got our buddy from Australia. <laughs> yeah, I know. I see right away you start laughing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I got to love it. And then we've got a guy that I'm really excited about also uh, bringing on tonight. We've got uh, William Crook Mad Frog. Uh, we're going to bring we're going to bring him on. You know, the guy's a hell of a paintball player. And uh, he's got he's got some great things going on, you know. Um, believe it or not, Mad Frog is not his real name, but his yeah his real name is, is William Crook. But I got to tell you, he's got he's got it going on. He's got some cool stuff. And I got to meet him last weekend at Bud Orr's place. Yep. And and it was cool as hell. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw both of these guys on right now. Heck yeah. Okay. We're going to start here with Mad Frog. How you doing, buddy? How's everybody doing, man? Doing, doing all right. Great. Doing all right. And Mr. Connor Bryant. How you doing, Connor? Good, mate. Good eye, everyone. <laughs> hey, I, I told you if you come on, you got to smile. <laughs> right on. Yeah, there you go. Right on, man. <laughs> Crikey, look, it's stuck. The yeah. wind chimes. Yeah. Well, you know, we're, we're going to jump over with Mad Frog real first, because I know once I start talking to you, Connor, you take over my show. I go get a sandwich and come back, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, buddy. You know that. How does that? There you go. Nah, nah. You know, I, yeah, my wife does that to me, too, and I still mumble. I don't I don't give her a minute's rest. Piece of cake. So, so Bill. Um, oh, that's right. we got two Bills here. Bill Mad Frog. We're going to go there. So, you know, um, 
everybody that comes on a show, the first thing I hit them up with is, how did you get started in paintball, buddy? Everybody wants to hear it. Well, I played, you know, I mean, just recreationally up here in a place called Splat City, downtown Detroit, um, middle, middle of Detroit, which, it, long story short about this one, it ended up being one of the properties that I take care of right now. Totally different building, but it used to be Splat City. Anyways, um, and I liked it, but it just didn't really, didn't really click. Um, I didn't have a lot of, uh, let's say, teams out here really trying to pull people in and stuff. So I kind of let it fade away for a while. Um, you know, watched it, magazines, you know, all that fun. When you used to be able to go to the, the, to the bookstore, and go to the magazine rack and have all those freaking cool magazines. Yep. I mean, faceful. I, you guys can't really tell by the way the camera is facing right now, but my walls are completely collaged with the inside of paintball magazines. Um, wow, splat. Cool. I mean, ev everything you can think of. Um, you know, it just I just loved what the magazines, but I didn't didn't play. Um, one thing led to another, and I had a son. Well, guess what dad and son did for fun? <laughs> and it just, it snowballed from there. Um, I'm going to say my favorite thing is scenario ball. Um, I love commanding large anarchy. Give me anarchy and I thrive. I just um, to have my heart pound and to have that control and the game going on and you know and then when i'm not commanding i mean one of the things i do like to do is is command games people are like well you're not on on the field you, i've got my game going on right here guys i mean look i've got i get i get a little sandboard out and i have my fun um but w the son and i just had a blast with it and it and it it steamrolled and the the personalities we have going to events and going to nppl events in psp events i started you know i don't know if i grab i mean obviously we gravitated towards people like rocky um you know uh, paxson and b and, and greg and all them just because we were kind of like hey these are our friends in the magazines but we started hanging out and some of them threw me into some tournament games that I had no business being in, <laughs> but uh, it's fun. I, I enjoy the fun aspect of it. Um, it is, I do. You know. I remember a day when it was it was it was a big big money maker. I mean, there was there was some money to be had. Um, now now you got to work for it. Now you yeah, got you, you got to work for it. I, I love those kind of games though back then, Bill, because you know. It, the pressure was not like it is during a tournament circuit. Cause you know, I played pro for a lot of years and I took my team out to all these places, but I used to, we used to call it captains and they weren't generals, but I used to captain a lot of big games. They flew me all over the place <coughs> doing these big games. And I got to tell you, the fun part about it was meeting always new people. Exactly. Having a great time. It was yeah. just, it, 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 to me that, that was paintball. You know, I, I love, doing the tournament circuit but that was like a business for me. you you meet some characters on the tournament circuit but you meet some characters in the scenario world yeah i mean <laughs> you know you got the guys out there in the damn tutus and the borat bathing suits and he's 400 pounds and you're like i didn't want to see that but <laughs> what the hell man that video is going to be awesome <laughs> that's a fair <laughs> dinner that's for sure <laughs> dan dan kobe and and john kobe are watching us right now uh, so they chimed in to say hi. Um, Dan and John Colby own the Mortal Air here. So those are those are some those are some great guys. I, I always love I I always love it when I'm in Chicago and those guys are around because I know they're going to be at events like Paintball Explosion and stuff. We run into them a lot. Yeah, yeah, terrific, terrific people. So you know, tell me a little bit about the Mad Frog thing here, buddy. I mean, well, the name is you know, cool as hell. So <laughs> when I started this, like I was saying with my son, um, we started playing and we started playing and. Um, I tried to get his friends involved and, you know, I mean, at the time things were really flush with the contracting and the economy and I had a little extra money here and there. And I went to Gino at national paintball supply and uh, speaking yeah. of Gino, yeah, um, I love the guy. 
<laughs> and uh, bought a couple of field kits. Um, he was the only one that would sell to me because I didn't have a brick and mortar store. And I really was just buying them just to have fun and goof around yeah. with my son and his friends. Um, cool. But somebody from a church tapped on my shoulder one time when we were out at a friend's property playing with our bunkers. Like I, I bought air bunkers. I bought a compressor. I, I bought a field. Um, well, wow. this church pre pastor, I'm not sure what you consider her as, but yeah, anyways, um, priest, I guess. Church um, person. Yeah. Church, the, the head of the church. She was, yeah. Anyways. Well, that would be gone. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. The head of the building. <laughs> The head of the sure. building? I don't know. <laughs> there <Anyways>. you go. <laughs> um, she uh, asked if we could do it for them, and I was kind of like, oh, wow. Um, uh, and then I was just looked at my son, and he was like, I'm like, let me get back to you. And then I went and talked to uh, Bob McGuire from American uh, APL, yep. American People League. Uh, yeah, and, you know, actually, I've got tapes over here. I, that, that was the first interview I ever did for anybody with Bob McGuire's Outdoor. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I got the first so, tape over here, too. So You Go know, I, I, I talked to him, and he's like, well, this is, you know, what are you going to do? And I threw, I told him I wanted to do a portable paintball field. And he's like, back then he was like, Oh no, 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 this is not happening. This is not, you're not going to be able to do this. You're never going to go to a, you be able to, you know, it's, it's not going to work. And I'm like, I explained to him how I wanted to set it up. And then I gave him some drawings and he's like, Oh, okay. Here's your insurance policy. Give me my check. And I kind of went with it. Um, you know, it's, uh, I didn't want to, ha I'm in Michigan, right? Right. So I, I, I'd have to have a building if I wanted to run a paintball business. Cause I mean, the weather, you can't, Yep. I, I mean, every once in a while they do this game called battle of Hoth at uh blast camp in, uh, I'm going to drop some fields. Sorry. Um, no, hope, no, uh, good. Okay. In Indiana. No, and it's a decommissioned Nike nuclear missile base that they turned oh, into wow. a paintball field. It's this is, badass virgil is the owner out there at blast camp so they do this game called battle of hoth and it's february 14th ish there's a lot of freaking snow on the ground <laughs> i don't want to play in the snow anymore yeah. I, I don't i i i actually i had i the last time i played there i've been there i've been there since but i haven't played but the last time i played at this game like three or four years ago i had walking to moan yeah, didn't yeah. even know what it freaking could be. I'm done with the winter, man. Yeah. That's, you know, no. Yeah. I'm with you. But that, uh, I, I guess yeah. that's why you live in Michigan, huh? Uh, Anyhow, well, it's, it's cheap. It's cheap to live here. I mean, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have to have, I don't have to have this damn thing on my face as much as, as the guys out in California. Yeah, you know, there you go. That was, so yeah, I can good. I can I can segue into the road trip stuff here if you want real fast, but that's kind of it. I didn't want to have the building in the property. I'm getting off topic. I, I'm real easy to get off topic and real excitable. Squirrel. So I apologize. Oh, cool, cool. No, Squirrel? everybody, yeah. everybody um, on the screen is that way. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, I I started doing uh, the portable paintball events in, in traveling around and doing these different setups um at different places for birthday parties literally for somebody's birthday party and for corporate events like gm parties and general motors parties and stuff like that um a uh, couple of school systems their summer programs were every year we did them and this was after i was told i'd never have a school as a customer and it it worked great for the longest time and then the economy dropped out and but in the meantime before the economy dropped out with the paintball I started building stuff for paintball fields. So if you want some, you want a town built. Okay. We'll come in. We'll build a town for you. Um, you want a couple theme buildings built. So that's kind of the portable paintball. Isn't just, Hey, I'll hire me out and I can bring a, we bring the game to you. Mad frog, portable paintball, madfrogpaintball.com. I'll give you a big explanation on it all. Madfrogpaintball.com. That is, um, and uh, right. we bring the game to you. You supply the people in the place, and then we literally bring everything with us. All the paint, all the safety equipment, the markers, 
If you've got property, we can set up a huge field. If you don't have property, I can set up a completely netted in three-man field. I mean, we've set up next to an airport on the tarmac before wow. during an air show. So I can completely like net this thing in. You can let eagles loose in it almost. Um, and, and a lot of that comes, I built it all. I mean, it, some of it was off of learning from the different events, you know, but I take my contractor, just my mechanic. I like Legos. Okay. Everything is Legos to me. Honest to God. I look at it and I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Okay. There you go. Um, so I like putting the Legos together different ways to do different things and have fun. Very uh -huh. cool. <laughs> yeah, well, that, you know, that sounds great. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to uh, Vito Doriaz watching us and Ryan Courtney. Um, I like I like to give a shout out to these people that uh, jump in and watch us, you know, because a lot of them watch us every week, huh, Billy? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just great. That is a great story there, uh, Mad Frog. I it's been tell you, it's and, been some fun. It's got it's gotten me some travel time in. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you and I were together last weekend at Bud's place. Yep. There you go. You know, that's some travel time. Yeah, yeah, you had a great wife too, by the way. She was uh, she was terrific. Uh, I, I was cracking up with them. They, she, she was she was pretty cool. So, but yeah, you know, Greg Hastings was down there, and that's what I mentioned. Greg's actually watching right now. Uh, and, uh, so anyhow, you know, Greg does the video games and, uh, you know, that's what he was down there, you know, getting, uh, Bill and myself all set up to be in the new video game coming out. So I can't wait to see it. Um, should be pretty cool. I hope he doesn't make me a bunker. You know, I wanted to be a player, but we'll see what happens. You know? <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of stuff. I, it's a, I know enough to get myself into it. trouble. I know. Yeah, we we can't the, talk much about it. So. One of the other reasons we were out there is I'm actually partners with Greg and Sonny and um, Ron Bailey. Not Bill Bailey, but our, yeah. our, no relation. Um, Ron Bailey. We're all partners in Hitman Air Power Time Trials. Right. Um, yeah, that was guys, pretty cool. I yeah, we that. brought. I brought one out from Detroit. Somebody purchased one. I put it all together for them, and I literally traveled from Detroit all the way to, uh, excuse me, Guardian Paintball. And uh, what do, what do they say? What is that at the LSO or SSL near San Pis near Pismo Beach, um, California? Oh, San Luis Obispo. There you go. There you yeah. go. There you go. I can't. I, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. I've been Sorry. working on it all week. So, no okay, problem. there you go. There you go. So we set it up there. Guardian paintball's got, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Gladiator paintball has got a, a setup out there. Um, and it's great. Um, so we've now got another time trials out there. And that was one of the things we were running there was we ran a California championship competition between, um, velocity paintball, who also has a Hitman air power time trials and tag paintball. Um, so between the three fields, we came up with the best times. And those people actually got pictures taken to get put into the video game. Yeah, I actually watched some of it live. Greg was, uh, somebody was filming it live. I was watching that that would have been, it. that was me. That was me well, running oh, around. Yeah, there. Okay. Yeah. You know, re real quick, everybody out there, you know, what, what Bill's talking about is they set up a time trial thing. And what it is, is he has different sections you have to go through. Um, they had pump, they had mechanical, and you shoot through these little boxes and there's targets set up on the other side. Like like one will be standing up, I'll have six targets. Then you got to go squat down and you got to stand up over here and go here. And it I, was said, cool I describe as it as I describe it as a paintball target obstacle course, kind of. You, you know, I was going to say that, too, but I figure I'll wait until you do that. So, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's oh. kind of it's like a three gun. It's it is it is a takeoff of a, of a three gun setup. Um, and then the way it's set up, you can run uh, paintball, airsoft, um, BBs. Um, uh, there's one customer that we have that we won't talk about that runs something a little heavier through. We had to make special targets for them. Yeah. Um, but we <laughs> we have these we have these all. I mean, we need to we need to keep them going. But we actually have one on a at a uh, Camp Tracy in South Korea, military base. Oh, wow. Very cool. Um, oh, wow. There's a partner in Poland. There's a partner in Germany. And then we have 
Jeez. Well, now we have three in California. We're getting ready. April 17th, we will be doing a East Coast champion. Oh, very so cool. we'll have uh, between Boston Paintball, um, Cousins Paintball, I believe, and a new partner with us, Hogan's Alley Paintball in Connecticut. So oh, we'll have the three cool. of them competing the same way we did in California. Yeah, and, I thought and that's... And that's something we're going to try to do like at, at a lot of these events as we deliver the time trials. We're going to try to have – try to make it more of an event. Um, it man, was pretty I, cool, I thought. You know, yeah. I just, you, you had me all the way to the squatting down one, you know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I, I figured getting down and shooting was a piece of cake. Getting back up. There, I need two practice runs. I need two practice runs before I want to score my time, let me tell you. I need to stretch <laughs> a little bit myself. Those, But it's – Watching some of those guys, the the I fastest guess, yeah. times honestly are mechanical and pump. The yeah. electros, the electros are close, but mechanical is mechanical hands down. Has yeah, let me ask you a question, Bill. Are, is there a limited amount of paint? Oh, you froze up, buddy. No, you can have as much paint as you want. Oh, okay, yeah, you there, that was cool. okay. Yeah, you, you froze right. yeah, up yeah. a little bit there. Sorry, no, no. You can use, uh, you can have as much paint as you want. Um, you, we do a a pump, we do a mag fed. There, there's um eighty three targets out on the course. Um, depend. Okay, well, depending on how you do it, you can have eighty three, or we'll push the targets together and make them one target to make it go faster. Um, different three different modes to play. But um, there's eighty three targets. So if you've got a hopper with one hundred and forty paintballs. If you miss that much more, your time isn't going to be good enough. Yeah. <laughs> there's some guys, there's some, the mag fed guys. So the, you have to, you have to hit those now before you can move on to the next correct, station, right? Correct. Yeah. And you can't, you can't shoot the window. You can't touch the frame. You know, um, a lot of guys will try to stick their barrel through the, through the window. And it's like, you're taking all that extra time. Yeah. Um, the mag fed guy that, really impressed me he had his rifle for the first two big windows and then when he went down on his knee and did the the low target he pulled his pistol out oh. and then, and then got up and put his pistol back and switched back to his his rifle oh wow um yeah it's and there's 10 different windows 83 possible targets um all at different ranges starting from 18 all the way up to 120 feet so wow. it's uh Bill, it's, did it's, you get a chance to look at that at all yeah, so I've seen it. yeah, I've yeah, I've seen it. it that's it's been around for a, a little while. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, they had it. Did Did you see the one last week in California? They yeah. had down there, though. Oh yeah, did yep, you? I watched it. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost stopped on there. I almost left early to go down there to do that, but I just had so much going on here, I couldn't do it. Um, yeah. As a trip. So, what do you think, Connor? You ready to put something like that together over in Australia? Yeah. Um, hey, you just just let me know when I'll come out and I'll help you build it. Uh, Australia is one of the places I've been to a lot of places. That's one of the places I haven't been to, along with a lot of Asian countries. I'm not interested in those now. I want to go to Australia. So let me know when you want to build it. All right, I'll yeah, shut up. you know, and and I I want to go there. I'm even thinking about going there this year too. You know, I wasn't going to say anything to Connor. I was just going to go knock on his door and go, "Hey, man, you got an extra bunk? Help me catch." And, uh, you know, it's big enough for three people, so we can all just have a big old snuggle party. But um, <laughs> it's... Uh, I'm the little spoon. We're knocking again. on your door. I'm the little spoon. <laughs> well, by the time you probably get over here, it'll be winter and it'll be a nice coastal breeze. So we'll need to, like, you know, be hugging there because um, there's even a fire ban through winter. <laughs> How is paint all over there right now? Um, have you been it, out playing at all? Yeah, I've been playing um, pretty much every weekend. Um, we've been having some crazy, crazy weather at the moment. Um, even though that we're just coming out of summer now, that like during the day, it's nearly 30 degrees Celsius and um, nearly 60, 70% humidity. And at nighttime, it, it floods. And then by coming around in the morning, it's sunshine and hot and crispy weather and then we get the rain again and even um on our weekends that's when the weather kind of gets itself together by actually raining during the day and then it's stinking hot during the night time so wow um, 
Yeah, you guys got a lot of snakes. Is there a lot of snakes on your field over there? Um, not so much because um, a couple of the snakes that we have um, were killed by the spiders. Yeah, the, the funnel webs either got them or we um, had an early lunch after the game with the snakes. So um, they taste like chicken. Um, <laughs> That's what I heard. That's what Bill told me. Uh, never tried it. So. <laughs> and our funnel snakes webs. Are bad. Snakes are bad. <laughs> yeah. Our funnel webs like to actually swim past us. I was lying lying down like um, last weekend actually and it just started bucketing and you could literally see the water starting to come out of the ground like it's absorbed all the all the water it can and it's starting to sort of leach out of the ground. Would and as I'm sort of lying there down behind one of my bunkers and everything out on, on our field, I just see this big black eight-legged thing just walking on top of the water as if to be like looking at me going, hey, move over, <laughs> like, you know, stop hogging the fast lane and just, just walks on, um, crawls up the barricade to get up out of the water and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to be going this way. <laughs> yeah, see, if, it, if it's, if it's going to kill me here, it's going to be bigger than me. I mean, there's there Michigan go. rattler snakes, but those are like, you, you never, ever see those. It's going to yeah. be a bear or a freaking moose or something like that. That It's going to be bigger than me. It's not going to be some little damn thing that crawled up my pant leg and decided to say, oh, hey, food. Well, I, even, have you heard of a scorpion? <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you know, I'll tell you what. Years ago, I was down in L.A. and we were playing um, Navarone. And... Uh, I crawl, you know, this is when it was 15, man. It was all pumping shit. So anyhow, I crawl into this field was really a trip. And it was like uh it was like a big spider dome. There was spider webs everywhere. So I crawl in here and I'm I hear Andy Greenwall. He was the captain back then of Navarone. And I hear him and he's bringing his men up like that. And I look over and there's this big black snake. And I mean, I just froze. And this guy is about three feet from me. And he crawls through and then he stops. And I hear Navarone, they're coming closer and closer. And I can't do a damn thing. I can't shoot at him. I don't want to move. And then pretty soon the snake crawled out. And they had these little uh, caterpillars. They're about maybe an inch and a half long. And they were falling on us and falling on our guys. And they spit in acid. And you would get a blister about two inches in diameter by an inch tall within a couple of minutes yeah it yeah, was I've, I've, I've had i've had an experience with those unfortunately oh those. my that, god it's and then there was the ones at emr the little fuzzy ones at emr yeah. if yep. you touch them oh yeah you're paralyzed yeah they're well, well, we, these guys we were bad news and nobody told us about it you know when we go out to do it so i'm sorry would you say connor we we have caterpillars that are kind of similar to that. Um, we call them spitfires and, um, they're, they're little furry things. They kind of look like a, a porcupine looking caterpillar thing right. and uh -huh. it's furry. And if you even brush up against one of that, you'll get blisters all across your fingers as to where you touched that's it. And that's exactly what this stuff did. Yep. Yeah. These, these guys were a killer and nobody told us about it. My guys are coming off the field and I, my my co-captain Bart Hildebrand, he comes off, and on his neck he's got a blister. It looked like a cyst. It looked like a half a baseball. And you know we're like, what in the hell is going on? And then the guy goes, oh yeah yeah, I forgot to mention, man, look out for them guys. You know, look out for the caterpillars. Well shit, mm -hmm. how do you look out for the caterpillars when you're you're crawling through the brush and stuff trying to trying to play the game? That was yep. interesting. Yeah. That's like the same as our black funnel webs that literally like a mill a mill of their venom will drop an elephant and kill it um they wow. literally they're that they're that bloody dangerous that um the we either call depends on where you come from they're either a funnel web or a trapdoor spider because they have like a little trapdoor and they'll come out bang down back into the trapdoor or they'll try and grab you and bring you back down but they kind of go bang before they realize what they're hitting and then go, that ain't going to fit in my hole. And then just like back right off. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Dulce from Canada said, he just texted and he says, that's why us Canadians don't mind playing in the winter. <laughs> yeah. 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 I guess that's a pretty good point. You know, right. Well, that, I had that, the that point well taken point well taken on yeah. that one. Yeah. I had the NPPL tournament. I held it down in LA one time 
and through the course of the tournament, you know, first of all, it was like 107, 108 degrees every day. It was just absolutely miserable. And it was like in this desert thing, because Jerry Braun says that would have been a good place to go. And Ron Kilborn, you know, he goes, oh, Freddie, you got to do it down here. But anyhow, through the course of it, the teams killed three or four different rattlesnakes out there. Well, they're playing the game. I mean, they they were just absolutely everywhere. It was just a miserable period. So you've been you've, you don't have not like that in Missouri, huh, Billy? Uh, well, we've got some really crazy ass caterpillars. They like grow wings and then they just fly away. <laughs> uh, what kind of crap is that? I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's just yeah, it takes it's a slow process. You know, they'll make a cocoon and then they just come out and they fly off so wow we call those butterflies out here that's weird. yeah yeah <laughs> 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 so mad frog you ever run in anything like that oh those the 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 acid caterpillars yes and then we're at where was um that? oh geez far no i don't think we were at emr emr was the fuzzy caterpillars and they had uh they had pictures up everywhere they had laminated posters up or like eight by tens of them blown up on a, a log or a rocker. They, they, EMR oh, went out of his way. Timmy, Timmy was, yeah, Timmy was managing at the time that Timmy, I think it was like the, just when Timmy just took over actually. Um, and yeah, that they, they were, they're like, no, 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 no. You touch these. It's not good. You're going to, you're, you're done. You're out. Um, we got to take you to the hospital. That's that. Um, and they had pictures everywhere. And and we they did see a couple of them. I mean, I saw one. Um Wow. You know, yeah, I, I poison got a little ivy, one on my arm. I watched poison ivy and poison oak tear up a lot of people out in the woods. That's kind of what it right well, here. see here's the pro I watched everybody else get torn up. I'll roll around in my underwear and it's no problem. Not me. Hey, yeah, Bud Orr's see, watching real quick, so everybody say hi to Bud, man. What's up, Bud? Yeah, Bud Orr, love you, buddy. You know that. I'm still in awe about that trip, man. I, you know, I. Hey, I, you a know, lot let of... me tell you. You know, when I walked around the corner, you guys were standing in this little workshop, and I go, "Wow, check that out!" And you go, "Well, wait till you walk around the corner." The corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I was telling everybody, man. We were walking around. I still got a skid mark on my jaw because it was dragging on the concrete everywhere I went. You know. And then we <laughs> had some other stuff we had to do for the game stuff, and it was like, I'm just holding on all this different stuff, and I'm just like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, you should have had a skid mark on, man. Yeah, you should have had a Fitbit on. I wish I would have had a GoPro going 24 7 because I was just like, I, I took out of my phone and took a couple pictures and selfies with things. And then, and then it was just like, I, I'm not going to have enough camera space. Wait a minute. There's this. Wait a minute. There's, I got to hold, I got to hold the first gun yeah. Bud ever made. It, wasn't that amazing? That was. Uh, hey, all right. Uh, real quick, guys. Gino's watching too. So let's all say hi to Gino. Oh. Gino yeah, from Belkin. Gino, you know, you know, you're coming in a little late, buddy, but we talked pretty good about you earlier. Um, yeah, in fact, I all of us talk good about you, except what, maybe Connor. But the rest <laughs> of us talk really good about you. We love you, Connor. <laughs> yeah, so that, that trip that trip was something else. Because I didn't I didn't I didn't expect that end part. Well, I mean what a so gracious kind of, host, too. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and I Kathy, mean, oh my god, yeah. yeah. You know, when I say I love Bud Orr, I actually mean it. You know the guy. I, I he's just like the brother that that I would love to have. He's just a, a terrific, terrific person. He really is. Yep. Yeah, I got to stop now because I'm about ready to cheer up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, you yeah. never got a chance to meet Bud or, but uh, sometime I'm gonna uh, have Bud on the show and I'm gonna put you on so you can meet him, and then oh, you're gonna I... you're gonna be just like the the three of us, man. You know. Just in awe with them. And if my you wife see, just you my wife stood back. back. Yeah. Yeah. My wife stood back and just let me go. You know, she popped in every once in a while. You were there. She popped in every yep. once in a while with the camera and boom, boom, boom. And then Same way, my just, wife. Just, just just let him just let him be. Just let yeah. him be. What you a know. great picture we took in his little workshop though. Was yep. that a cool picture? That, dude, that 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 whole yeah, that whole thing was great. I mean we brought my dog with us too. Bud was great yep. with the dog. Uh, baby is our do our German Shepherd, so yep. she got to play in the Bud's pool and ran around the backyard um, with his dogs. 
kept barking I mean, at me because I had my cowboy boots on and I was clicking. I don't think she liked the clicking noise from the cowboy boots. But, uh. <laughs> that too. And she was, come on, she was, she's pretty much, her and I do a lot of running. I mean, she's fast. We like to, we like to, like to have some fun and walk around and stuff. And now you're not telling me you can outrun that dog. No, 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 oh. no. That dog run goes faster than the golf cart. The golf cart goes 32 miles an hour. And that's after wow. double elbow replacement. She's had really? both her front. When we, oh, we rest, you know, we rescued her. She Good was a man. great dog when we rescued her. Um, right probably three weeks into having her, we discovered she needed elbow surgery. Well, it was too late by then. So guess who didn't go to Maui that year? There you go. But, hey, but, but you know what? We got it. We got, we've got, a, I got a companion that, you know, I'm sure right now she's probably, she's my wife's service dog, but I'm sure she's sitting right outside this door waiting for me to get done. Yeah. She, no, she was a great dog. And you know, yeah. I'm a huge animal lover. So, so hearing that man is just nothing short of terrific. I, yeah. I absolutely love that. Really when do. you were saying that, guess who didn't get to go to Maui that year? I'm guessing Baby didn't go to Maui. But... <laughs> no, baby didn't go to Maui either. No, she didn't know. Yeah. yeah, we were trying to make it. Well, it didn't happen, actually. We were trying to, you know, well, no, it did happen, but it didn't happen for us. We were trying to make it to Hawaiian Legends 2. Um, we went to Hawaiian Legends 1. That was a lot of fun. Um, the CPX does it. It's one of their branches, if you guys don't know, off of their Living yeah. Legends Uh yeah, stuff. we were going to do it this year. You know, Hanu called me up and he goes, oh, man. He goes, I'm going to take care of you over there, Fred. You know, I'll get you a, a place and everything. And then they cancel it. And yeah, like, it's oh, a great man. it's a great field. It's a great little field. Now, I went out there for the first one. I actually helped the ref. So I helped run the first first event out there. Myself and Connor a lot, um, helped out at extras to DJ and, and Lonnie. And it was a good time. We, we I had it. It, it was a well played field they got a bunch of catwalks in the air um it's yeah, some cool I, I stuff we get to you know, we get terrific. to do some yeah. we get to do some really neat crap man hey let me tell you buddy you know back in the day you were probably still a kid when i was out there banging on this stuff and and i i, I mean i traveled absolutely everywhere i had the best sponsors in the world uh, they were just nothing short of terrific, and they just took me everywhere. And Bud well, just says, uh, Bud's in North Carolina tonight, so he's not not out here. So, you know, it's not oh, like wow. eight minutes to eight for Bud. It's like eight minutes to 11 for Bud. Yep. So, and, and he's still <laughs> up and watching us. You know, that's, that's just terrific. That, that's what you call a friend. Um, Much appreciated, uh, Bud. Yeah, absolutely, Definitely. buddy. We, Bud knows I love him. I don't have to tell him that. He just uh, <laughs> he's known that for a long, long time. And then you, that marker he gave me. Uh, oh man! Dog, oh my God! When he I pulled just... that box out and started walking out of it, I oh. was putting some stuff away at that time, and I saw that, and I'm like, "Oh man, is that? that... Was... Yeah, that's cool. It it abs. You've seen it? Did... Have you seen it, Connor? I've only seen the picture of the box. I haven't actually seen the marker oh, inside. Hey, and you it. know what? I, I hold this box up the other day because he put to Fred the man, but or right. So on last week's show, I go, yeah, to Fred the man, but or. And Bill Bailey goes, no, Fred, I think it's to Fred the man, but or. And I said, you know what? I, I felt a lot more important a minute and a half ago. <laughs> That's great, Bill. That's great. Was, That's uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> leave it leave it to bill to burst my bubble like that it's gotta always be somebody that brings us down to reality yeah, keeping right keeping you on the ground fred just keeping you on I, the ground yeah i think like <sighs> you know, check, check out, Connor. the john wine oh yeah oh. signed by butter yeah those things are awesome wow that is um, gorgeous. I mean, I, I didn't even know what to say to him. I mean, I was just absolutely stunned you know, when he brought when was out. When was that gun actually, that marker actually put together? I mean, how many of those you think he's got sitting around for special people? I don't think he has many. So that's well, I, that yeah. there definitely that I, I, I'm jealous. I right. am so jealous of that. I think that one was made in 2004. You know what? That's what I heard. And it's yeah. brand new, never, never used. Yep. And, Will you shoot it? No, no, I no. won't. No, really. Act okay. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm having a a box made, and it's gonna. It has a black backing on it, a felt backing, 
We're going to mount the gun in it, and then we're going to put uh, the pictures that I took with Bud down below on it. And uh, that's going to go up on my wall as a keepsake. I've got, a, I've got a, I've got a, a, a saber that I won as an award for a game I commanded. I actually didn't even win. I was the runner up and for uh, dreaded legends, it was a CPX game and I got a sword. I mean, literally a saber that I could, a real life saber. And that's one of the things I wanted to do with it was get it in a box and like put my ID card and stuff with it. And then, and then I looked at what the prices were for t-shirt boxes and I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to get this done. And then I looked at what they wanted, the price for a sword box. And I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'll just hang it on the wall with a couple of hooks and dust it off all the time. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh I, I just uh, I was stunned when he brought that out. It just uh, it absolutely and, yeah. And and Mad Frog was right there. He was standing right there when he brought it out, and it just uh, <laughs> it just absolutely blew me away. <laughs> and and nine, yeah, two thousand four I think is uh, what somebody else told me too. Yep. And it's brand new, never been shot, and still in the original box. Yep. I mean, what a collector's item that was, man. Yep. Yeah. It's so awesome. there, you seen it, Connor? What do you think? Oh. I am absolutely blown away by that marker. It's sort of like the the ethos of Bud Orr is like, you know, they had the Duke and now they've got the man, Bud yeah. Orr. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do, hey do, me a, do me a favor. Tell Mad Frog how you guys have to keep your markers over there. You know, we, oh, I mean, I oh. got them laying everywhere here. Tell them how you got to keep <laughs> them over there. Uh, prepare, prepare to be just completely and utterly like, Dismayed, I know. Right? I know a little bit. I know a little bit because I've done some homework. So I I know a little bit. Well, over here, um, for many many years, like they even tried um, banning paintball markers for the simple fact of that they are semi-automatic, and that um, for many many years, ever since the inception of paintball, they were considered a firearm. You had to keep them in a gun safe. You had to have a gun license. It had to be three bolted, like three bolts into the wall and into the ground. You'd have police come and check to make sure you're holding your paintball markers and storing them correctly. Um, only last year, um, they were taken off the firearms registry, and now Department of Fair Trading which is like the business regulator actually controls paintball now and they're a regulated sporting implement and I can keep them now um, in it. I've got to keep them in a steel lockable box. Um, I can't just walk out the back door after I've checked my gun or something and test fired. I've got to go drive to my actual. Oh, I'd be in a lot of trouble if, if I, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Oh boy. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, that's nothing. You see Bill Bailey's place up above you there? <laughs> you know, yep. the first time the first time I had Bill on, I thought he was in a, in a store. And it isn't. That's his place. And you're only seeing a portion of what this guy's got. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I mean. That's literally living the dream. If only we could do that here because you get Oh, you caught. can do it there. We just have to come and visit you in jail. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. <laughs> I think I just might need to to move countries or something, but it it's like to have that it it's really tough penalties though. Like even though they're not a firearm anymore, they've still made it quite a severe penalty that it's like um if you're not keeping them in a steel lockable box or if you get caught running around your backyard with your mates having a just a real muck around kind of game it's a hundred thousand dollar fine Whoa. and a possibility Whoa. of 10 years in jail for um shooting wow. these things in a non-licensed venue wow it, you know andy Sturette, That's crazy. Uh, yeah it is andy Sturette, uh just chimed in andy Sturett has the ellie remember foundation there in uh colorado um uh, andy's uh he's a great great guy i can't say enough about him Actually, I got pictures of me and Andy 100 years ago, too. It was pretty cool. And then we just kind of <laughs> reconnected this year. But he just said, you should be immortal, Gino. It will do you all good. So, you know, uh, Gino, Gino's watching right now. Dan Kobe's on right now. Bud Orr's on right now. I think Jim Lively's watching right now. What, you know, <laughs> tell me what better group you could get of people watching this show. Oh. Uh. I don't know why anybody would want to listen. I don't know why anybody want to listen to me talk. I don't get it. <laughs> and that's what Connor said. No. Yeah. 
No, I it. didn't. Hey, you're the only one in Australia. He'll come and kick my butt. I'm not going to say that about him. <laughs> hey, I'm really sure this guy can swim and swim good. <laughs> hey, hey Willie, what, what's on your agenda for this year? What 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 games are you going to be uh, playing at or generaling or? Me? Oh, geez. Uh, the next one. We got some crazy stuff going on, actually. Uh, so this last trip, actually, out to Bud's and everything, I kind of lost my mojo, all right? With all this COVID stuff going on and having to have this stupid freaking mask on all the damn time. and um, See, People get, tell me I look better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't have to smell my bad breath, you know. Um <laughs> I was getting all ready to go to events last year and then they were getting canceled. So I lost all, Oh, who cares about this? Well, this road trip across the country just got me going again. I love this travel. So, do so I. I'm trying to re-energize my schedule. Um, the end of, I'll be driving to all of these, by the way, I, I will be either taking the bus with probably about 12 of us in it or just the van with three or four of us in it. Um, Jurassic game, which is in paintball Orlando. So I'll be driving to Florida at the end of March, middle of April. I will be at Hogan's alley paintball for the Hitman air power time trials. Um, then we've got super game West. So I'll be going all the way out to Oregon. Um, then we have uh, living legends. Um, and that's all within like, Couple of a month and a half. Yeah, yep. Yep. <laughs> a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and you know, yeah. and then they I'm, got the, I'm the living legends. The living legends. They, you know, uh, Kevin went and scheduled the World Cup on the same weekend. Yeah. Yep. So that that kind of sucks, but that it is what it is. You know. It's yeah. It always. Yeah. You, know, you know. There's. There's. You don't have a lot of good weekends, so you you do end up having overlaps, and then especially yeah. with the year we've had last year, and yep, the year that a lot of places are going to have this year. Um, well, I'm I mean, looking. At, we're going to drive to mine too. That's what yeah. I'm going to do because. You know, I had literally hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of miles in the air. Uh, it was just incredible. And, you know, I like road tripping with my wife now. Well, you can you know? get there is so much to see in America. Yeah, man. absolutely. I mean, right. there, is, there are so many different apps and stuff. I don't even know if you're into that, but. I mean, like everything Root, like that. I, I Route 66 is great. Route yeah, 66 has got all the That's freaking, what we took last time. Oh, my God. That, that was so cool. That's what we took home. That's what we took home from Bud's. Yeah, that I went down to my home. daughter's. I went down to my daughter's in Alabama, and we took Route 66 down there. I took There's 40 so part way, and then we jumped to over do. to Route 66. Yeah, and then All the alone, little towns. Yeah, and then let alone if you go any other way, like when we take the upper route to go to a super game, we can go by Mount Rushmore. I mean, yeah. you got the green there. Oh, we we stopped at the Valley of Fire National Park in Nevada on the way home. Uh -huh. That was like our first real stop. Um, you know, because we had the dog and stuff. We didn't really want to stay in a hotel in Vegas, even though she's a service dog. We could have got away with it, but we, we decided to drop. A couple we dropped Greg in, off in Vegas and we took off the wife right. and me and the dog and we were road tripping family style. Yeah, I um, love doing that with my wife big time. It's great. I, you know, the only thing I miss is I'd rather my wife and my two kids. I know we get annoying on each other every once in a while, but I mean my kids are grown. Um, my daughter's back home because she's done with college and she should be in Vietnam teaching right now, but because of everything she's not. Um, my son, I just made me a grandfather. So Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, so my kids are older, but I still have fun with them. That's yeah. You know yeah. what? I'm yeah. like, I am not going to go out of this world, a rich man, unless I win the lottery out of some weird ass freaking, I don't buy tickets. So, I mean, it's going to have to be really <laughs> weird. Um, I'm not going to be rich, but damn, I'm going to be rich in memories and rich in, I, exactly. I like right. to enjoy life. Um, yep. So do I. And, you know, that's one thing I always mention all the time is how blessed I was, you know, once I got into paintball, the people that I got to meet in paintball. Um, because, you know, and Randy Camilla started it for me um, because I was doing the Ronald McDonald House things. And, 
he seen that and he asked me who my sponsor was. And I said, I don't have a sponsor. And he goes, well, who flies you here? And I go, I fly myself. And I got the construction company as a piece of cake, you know. And he gave me the first cover shot. And I got to tell you, it just exploded from there, Mad Frog. I, I don't know how many cover shots you know I've got, but I've got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> on all the magazines everywhere. So I'm, I feel so blessed. And to know people like Bud Orr and now meeting you. You know, it, like I say, it, I like hooking up with the best people that support the sport and push it. Like Connor over there, like you, like Bill Bailey. Bill Bailey does so much for paintball that nobody even knows about, you know. And, well, and I just think it's great. I just, I, I just, I love being with guys like you, and that's the blessing for me, right there. That's the fun part. I think that's what I miss the most is not being able to, uh, you know, hang out with everybody. You yeah. Know, one of the fun things that so Hell Survivors up here in Michigan, uh, Dave Massey, um, he had games last year. Um, you know, they didn't give us any crap. You know, we kept ourselves apart and distanced a little bit more maybe um, in staging, and there wasn't as many people, but we all had protest signs ready to go if they were going to tell us we couldn't play paintball. We were going right. to be like, no, we're playing paintball. It's a protest. Yep. So we had <laughs> Running the protest down. signs. Yeah. Screw it. We were ready to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you you got to make you a know. stand someplace, you know, and that would have yeah. been a good one. But so, guys, you know what? We've run over the hour here already. Um, oh boy, I talk too much. I'm sorry. No, no, not at all. You know, I mean, I, I'm going to have all you guys back on. Well, Bill's on every week, so. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to have you guys uh, back on for sure. You know, uh, Connor. You know, Connor, you're you're just a great guy. I've had you on a couple of times. Yeah, before we oh, go, uh, now Bill Bailey told me all about your Sean Connery impersonation. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no! Don't laugh, baby. Yeah. Come on, you know. I mean, everybody's <laughs> waiting to hear it, so let, let's hear it. And none, none of this juicy, juicy, juicy. Go. Hello there, money, Penny. My name is Sean. Sean Connery. I'm here for the rescue mission. <laughs> I. Oh, my martini shaken, not stirred. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could, was Yogi Bear. <laughs> you could do you could do one of those like uh, answering machine. You could be one of those guys they hire out to do the answering machine. 007 did my answering machine. Oh, man, look, look at how this guy's mind works. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to be where to be like, hello, you've reached Bill's shop. His catchphrase is rock out with your auto cocker out. And that here at his shop, your cocker will be fixed. You can run a flag up the pole if you get your auto cocker fixed by Mr. Bill Bailey. Twenty bucks <laughs> for twenty dollar dues. This man can fix any gun. <laughs> I love it. Hey Connor, I appreciate so much for being on tonight, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, tell your tell your mom you that I, tell your mom I love her because you know Connor's mom has been been checking us out here now on the show and uh you know Absolutely. she's got she got to be pretty good if she had you yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I bet it was i bet it was nerve-wracking for a few years but i'm sure it's all kind of melted out now huh yeah pretty much she uh did uh i have to mention though that uh after showing her some of your older photos of back in back in the day that uh awesome. she uh did uh say that you reminded her very much of steve perry that it was like all of that uh, Steve Perry from Journey. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, because I had hair back then, too, you know. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I, I tell everybody the hair is still there. It's just I'm so fast now. It just went to the back of my head. That's all. Well, everybody so knows that's crap, mullet, but I tell them that. <laughs> seeing the mullet that you had back in the day, if you had a came down under, you would have been a god to some of like the, the Aussies out here. It would have now been you like, tell me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the second coming of the the mullet god. You know, where, where were you so thirty like, years ago? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I, I I even had hair thirty years ago. I, yeah. I, 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 uh, down to down to my down to my waist. Yeah, down to my too. waist. I kid you, know you not. Yeah, my my wife still has my ponytail, but we cut my ponytail off at one of the masters, and they wanted it to auction it off. And my <laughs> wife's like, "Hell no!" So now I got some dead ass piece of hair 
someplace that she's got put away. You know, and we like, did a charity event, and I actually my beard was probably about twice as long as it was, and we did a charity event, and we pulled off six hundred bucks, and I let him shave my face. Oh wow, really? So well, started over. Cool. It was it was nice. I guess I could have got a lot more money if we would have planned it. I kind of did it spur of the moment, but yeah, it was it was you know what the heck. And it's for charity. That's cool as hell. Why not? It's only hair. Yep. Like right on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Connor, you want to say goodbye to everybody, buddy? Yep. Uh, I'll uh, catch you all next time. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. And um... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for twenty dollars, it is me and Bill will probably be going around the world. Yeah. Um, there you go. <laughs> with Mister Fred Schultz. <laughs> Connor, uh, I appreciate very much you coming on tonight, buddy. All right. I really, really oh, do. And, and you know, you'll be on again. That's not a problem at all. You know, you can jump on any time. Sink a tinny. Okay. <laughs> sink a tinny. That's it. Yeah, we'll sink a tinny. Yeah. Raise a tinny. And, there you uh, go. Oh, uh, look at this. Well, uh, hey. we'll have to tell you all about how to do a shoey. Yeah. And, and I drag my sissy ass straw out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Fred. We, you are still part of the tinny club. Mine's hey, been a manly for a while. Straw. I just pretended it. it's totally yeah. like done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I use a manly straw out of a dirty <laughs> glass. There you go. All right, Connor, you have a good yeah. evening, buddy, and thanks so much for being on. <laughs> As Mr. Connor Bryant from way down under in Australia. Um, <laughs> what do you think of a mad frog? Pretty cool guy, huh? Definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. Um, I man, they just seems like it would be a fun place to visit. Uh, every Australian I've ever met has been been an interesting person, and let me tell you, when you when you hang out with interesting people, interesting things happen. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, hey, yeah, when you decide to go there, let me know. You know, maybe we'll hop over there together. Hey, that would yeah, be awesome. My, my That'd be awesome. It. Yeah, my you wife know, would love it. It'd thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me on, and everybody for listening to me talk. I use, you know, we. Hey. I try to do something like this every Sunday around four o'clock with me and a couple of the guys from our paintball team. Um, cool. So hey, one, it, one more time, give us your website so people can get on and check it out here. Madfrogpaintball.com. That's madfrogpaintball.com. Um, you can pick up swag. We've got a bunch of stuff there you can check out. Um, or check us out, like I said, Mad Frog Militia, as you can see behind <coughs> me here. Um, that's our paint my paintball team. Um to go along with Mad Frog Paintball. I mean, why not? Um makes sense. Yeah, check us out. We do Swamp Talk. We call it uh, 4 o'clock on Sundays, and sometimes it's just BS, and we start talking about bus stuff. We start talking about anything but paintball and then realize it's like, uh-oh, we messed up. <laughs> well, hey, but, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on tonight. No, thank um, you for having me, definitely. Yeah, I, you know, definitely going to have you back on again. I thought I think it was great. I, I absolutely loved it. So. All right, buddy. Yeah, I, got, I can. I mean, I can come up with some. I can come up with some road trip stories too, if you ever want to get into some road trip stuff. Because, man, I mean, I've done trips where they've been seven thousand mile round trip road trips, where we've done three events in one trip at different ends of the world, uh, the the country. We've had some fun. So, if you ever get into road trip stuff and want to talk about some some stupid stuff that we did, we can. <laughs> I can definitely include. I can definitely fill you in on that. Sounds good, buddy. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, man. thanks again for being on. All right. Have no, thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. Take all it right. easy, everybody. Good Night. See ya. See ya. That was Mr. William Crook, uh, Mad Frog. Remember, madfrog.com. You know, get on, check his stuff out, man. Cool guy. Had a lot of lot of fun tonight. What do you think, Billy? Was it cool? Uh, it was pretty cool. I, I'm not. Real keen about these spiders coming up out of the <laughs> out of the water on a playing field. Like, oh my god! Man, I didn't want to freak you out with that spider and stuff, you know. Oh god! You know, we got brown recluses and black widows, but something tells me they they just get their asses kicked by that stuff that's in Australia. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Well, yeah. Oh, absolutely! You know, even when I go to the mountains out here, I go up to the mountains and they got the tarantulas. Hell, oh, the tarantulas yeah. are like that, you know. Yeah. We're sitting we're sitting there one night and 
one crawled across my leg and I just sat there and just watched it do it. And then I look over and one of my kids is picking one up and it didn't bite her. You know, she just picked it up. She goes, look at this. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Throw that thing down, man. So we, we, yep. had, we, we had those at Camp Pendleton. There was a, uh, it was, it was during the end of, uh, let's see, what was it? School of infantry. No. Yeah. It was a school of infantry. I, I think so. And, uh, we we had a 50 caliber machine gun set up and right off to the the right there was a, a you know a foxhole where you could your know, rifleman would shoot out of and uh they'd use sheet metal so the sand and dirt wouldn't fall into it and at night uh, the guy was yelling yelling at us to quit throwing rocks and we're like we're not throwing rocks and he's like yeah i can hear it and uh he turned his flashlight on and it was tarantulas there was holes behind the sheet metal and they were falling out the hole, hitting that metal and falling into the pit with them. Oh, and shit. There was like four or five <laughs> damn tarantulas in there and he about crapped himself. He come flying up out of there, you know, and we're trying to do a night, you know, night ops thing. It was, it was pretty damn funny. But, uh, wow. But yeah. Well, we had a pretty good show tonight, buddy. Yep. You know what? It was it awesome. absolutely did. So, well, hang on. Let me say goodbye. Hang on. Yep. And I'll pull you back up in a minute. All right. We'll see you guys. All right. Well, guys, you know, appreciate you hanging with us here. You know, this these are some great guests. Uh, like I say, you know, I'm blessed with the people I know. Um, you know, I'm blessed uh, with the people I get to put on the show, you know. Bill Bailey, um, you know, great, great guy to hang out with here. Uh, I love having him on the show each week. And, you know, Mad Frog and Connor, they were just terrific tonight. One more time real quick, I want to mention uh, Mr. Paul Hernandez. Uh, they're having a benefit for him this weekend down south at Ambush Park. Um, if you get a chance, go out and show your support for the family and, and help them out a little bit. That would be really, really cool. And remember next week, Billy and I are going to be there with the Women in Paintball. A great, great group. And then the week after that, by popular demand, we're going to have the Boonie Boys from Canada back on again. I can't wait. Uh, Jeff Thompson was watching us tonight. Uh, it, you know, it, they're just a great group of guys. So what I want to say to everybody is thank you so much for watching us tonight. It's uh, It's been a pleasure having the guests I had on. It's been a pleasure having you watch us, and I appreciate all the comments. Uh, Bud, I know you're on the East Coast. You stay safe and get home safe, buddy, all right? So, all right. So, I guess till next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Pacific time, please, from me, play hard, play safe, play fair. But, damn it, get out there and play some paintball, all right? Support your store.